Well, welcome to this one page summary where we're going to introduce the idea of glands. Now a gland is simply something that produces a product. So a gland is going to produce a product. But the key thing to grasp initially is that there's two types. There's exocrine and there's endocrine. So all the glands in the body <coughs> can be classified as endocrine or exocrine. X for exit, exocrine. Endo, endo inside. So an exocrine gland will excrete its product via a duct. There will be some duct that allows the product of the gland to escape. So for example, if we think about the surface of the skin, there we have the surface and the epidermis, and below that we have the dermis, then a sweat gland will go down into the epidermis, form a coil like that. And that would be the hypodermis below. Now the glandular portion of the sweat gland is down at the bottom here. So this area is glandular. This is producing, this area down here is producing the sweat. And once the sweat is produced, it will rise through the duct. So this section here is the duct taking the sweat onto the surface of the body. So it's a ducted gland. Now this one contains many cells, so it's a multicellular exocrine gland. And you might think of other examples, you might think of um, salivary glands, or maybe mammary glands producing milk in the breast. But other exocrine glands are sing simple single cells. So if we consider the respiratory epithelium, for example, made of columnar cells with the nucleus and the uh, cilia perhaps on the top, then every so often there'll be a different type of cell. And uh, when people first started looking at these types of cells, they thought it looked a bit like a, an upside down old fashioned drinking vessel called a goblet. So they called them goblet cells. And they produce mucus that goes onto the surface of the respiratory epithelium, the endothelial lining. And that's good because that forms the mucociliary clearance system. The glands in the digestive tract, we've mentioned the um, salivary glands, but you might think of the glands in the gastric mucosa or the pancreas. You might think of the tear ducts producing tears. So many glands are exocrine producing products that go somewhere via a duct. I suppose the duct in the unicellular one is quite short but it still has a physical way to get out onto the surface. Now endocrine glands are different. So if we have some endocrine cells here, imagine these are some endocrine cells in an endocrine gland. So these are endocrine cells. Now the key feature about endocrine glands is they produce some sort of endocrine product. So the endocrine glands are synthesizing endocrine product, pink in this case. So they're happily making endocrine product. Now the endocrine glands are very vascular. 
So there's going to be capillaries running through the endocrine gland. This will be on a very small scale, it's on a cellular scale. So here we have a capillary running through the endocrine gland because they're very vascular. Now what happens is the endocrine product is secreted directly into the blood. It goes directly into the blood and that means once it's in the blood it can go away into the systemic circulation and from there it will go into the venous system and it will circulate systemically around the body. So an endocrine gland is simply a gland which releases its product directly into the blood, directly into the bloodstream. And in fact, in the old days, they used to call the endocrine glands the um, ductless gland system because it's glands, it's glandular tissue, it's producing things, but it has no ducts, as did the salivary gland or the mammary gland or the, pancreas, or the pancreas. The product goes directly into the blood. And that means that we can have a um, signal molecule traveling around the body. So these are the producer cells and they will go off to a target cell. There will be target cells around the body where this particular endocrine product will interact with another tissue. And here we have the endocrine product. And we notice that the endocrine product is circular. Now, glands produce the hormone. The hormone circulates around the body. We know that now. But in the body, there's trillions of cells. And the thing about cells is they have, they have receptors on their surface. So for example, this cell we see has got square receptors on its surface. And uh, this cell here we see has got triangular shaped receptors on its surface. Now, of course, they're not really triangular shaped. These shapes represent specific receptor sites for specific chemicals which might be circulating around the body. Because the endocrine product needs to interact with a specific target receptor. The target receptor is normally a protein, very often on the surface, but not, not, not necessarily on the surface of the cell. It is a particular protein, and it's a particular receptor protein. And if you like, the cell surface protein or the protein associated with the cell that is the receptor site for the signal molecule, the endocrine hormone is the signal molecule. This is the lock and the endocrine molecule is the key. So here we have this circulating endocrine product. Now, is that circular endocrine product going to fit into that square-shaped proteinaceous receptor site? Well, obviously it's not going to. So it's going to keep circulating. Is it going to fit into the triangular-shaped receptor site? Well, again, no, it won't. It's the wrong shape. So I'm just wondering if there's a cell somewhere that's got the right shaped receptor on the surface. The specific receptor molecule for this particular signal. So it keeps looking and oh, yes, there's one there. That's good. So it can fit into that. So we see we have the producer the endocrine product is the chemical messenger. The chemical messenger will only take its message to its specific target cell. And then there's going to be an interaction between the endocrine hormone here. Here's the endocrine hormone. And the receptor, the specific receptor for that endocrine hormone. And when we have the combination of the signal molecule and the receptor molecule, that will then generate secondary changes inside the cell. So inside the cell, there's what we call a secondary messenger system. 
So in this context, the endocrine hormone was the primary messenger circulating systemically, but then that triggers off secondary messenger systems inside the cell. And that will bring about some physiological change inside the cell. So for example, if this signal molecule was insulin, and this was an insulin receptor, then that would increase the permeability of this cell membrane to glucose, and glucose will go from the tissue fluids into the cells. Or alternatively, if this signal molecule was produced by the thyroid gland, then the thyroid hormone would circulate around the body. The thyroid hormone would interact with the thyroid receptor. That would generate these secondary messenger systems biochemical secondary messenger systems inside the cell and in the case of thyroid hormone that would stimulate the hundreds or even a couple of thousand mitochondria inside this highly enfolded surface that would stimulate the secondary messenger system would stimulate the mitochondria increasing the metabolic rate of the mitochondria thereby increasing the metabolic rate of the cell. And if that's happening all over the body, it's going to increase the metabolic rate of the body because thyroid hormone is going to stimulate metabolism via this secondary messenger system. So remember, glands are exocrine or endocrine. The endocrine produces endocrine hormones. Endocrine hormones are chemical messengers produced by producer cells, circulating systemically in the blood and tissue fluids, interacting with specific receptor proteins to regulate the physiological activity of the cells that the hormone is communicating with, having a physiological effect inside the cell, thereby controlling physiological processes. And this can take a little bit of time. So it's not like the nervous system that works essentially works instantly. This can work over time and the effects can be somewhat prolonged. But the aim is to have physiological coordination of the body. The whole body needs to be coordinated. The 75 trillion cells or whatever it is in the body need to be doing the right thing at the right time. How do they know that? Well, they're controlled by the nervous system and they're controlled by the endocrine system. A physiological regulation ensuring homeostatic activity and normal physiological life-giving activity in the trillions of cells that make up the human body.